Hi, everybody. Welcome to Norland Unwrapped. We're just going to wait for the numbers to come up. Oh, I can see people logging on. It's so lovely that you've all joined us. Well, they are going up very fast, actually. That's brilliant. It's a lovely day today, so I'm so glad that you've chosen to spend your time sat watching us. That's fantastic. We'll just wait a few more seconds for everybody to get in. Brilliant. I should make a start in a minute. No, they're still coming in. That's great. I think we'll give it another 10 seconds or so, and then we'll make a start. So we've got lots to get through, and it's going to be a really, really good session this evening. Okay. Right, I think we're going to make a start and obviously people can join us as and when they can um, get logged on. So hello and welcome to Norland Unwrap. Thank you so much for coming in again and, and so brilliant that you're here to join us. But this is going to be a really exciting session because this is a, a launch of our new degree and diploma subject to validation and it's going to be a really, really good session. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm absolutely delighted that we've got the head and the deputy head of learning. Lucy and Becky are here today and we've also got Hattie who's our head of set. So it's a really, really good session. As with all our sessions, um, they are going to be recorded but I'll touch on that in a moment. So I think the numbers are still coming up but we will crack on if that's okay. So as always, the session is going to be recorded. The cam your camera is off as always and your microphone is muted so we can't see you and we can't hear you but hopefully you can see us and you can hear us. This is our ninth unwrap session it's amazing you can watch all our unwrap sessions they're going to be uh, online and this one is going to be no different and that will be available after as well and it will get emailed out to you and as we always have we have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation you can see the Q&A button at the bottom of the zoom screen we love to hear from you there is no such thing as a silly question um, and they're here to help you and, and find out as much information as you can and Hattie's going to be on hand to answer questions obviously from a student's perspective but I will draw your attention if you have got questions about a specific course that you want to do um, in order to make sure that you've got enough UCAS points or any um, regarding finance or anything like that can I ask you to please send your questions through to the admissions department um, and they'll be able to answer your questions as well so um, there's lots of other opportunities we've got our virtual open events online as well you can find out all about how to apply about fees and funding all the amazing career opportunities about everything there's so much information you can find on our website um, and obviously our virtual events so if I can ask Lucy to turn the next screen we will start but I'm gonna give you lots of information now. If you may not know that we have recently been awarded another award from the Whiskers, um, the Whiskers account, and that is the winner of the Small and Specialist Award. And we're absolutely chuffed to pieces to, to get this. And it really is testament to the amazing standard of training that our staff and that our students can obviously experience. And we're really, really pleased to get that because obviously that's a recognition. We are small and we are specialists and to get that award is fantastic. And it, uh, it's our third win, which is great. Obviously we've won the winner of the Enhanced Graduate Outcomes in 2021. Um, and obviously we've also won the independent higher education awards which is our inspiring course and it really is fantastic to to get these awards we are a multi-award winning which is fantastic and we're very proud of that and hopefully there'll be more awards for us in the pipeline so without further ado i'm going to pass on to the team and i will see you at the end for the q a so thank you so much Thank you, Kate, and hello, everybody. It's really lovely to be here with you this evening, and I'm delighted to be able to tell you a little bit about myself before handing on to colleagues. So I'm Dr. Rebecca Digby, and I'm the Head of Learning, Teaching and Research at Norland. And just a really little bit about myself. I've been in education for a very long time now, so over 20 years, and I began um, working with um, children in early years as a teacher many, many moons ago. And then I became an advanced skills teacher and I've worked across England and Scotland in that role. So supporting young children in different schools and institutions. And then I moved into higher education and I've worked in different institutions um, and universities and as a subject leader in early years and early childhood. And now here I am at Norland, Head of Learning, Teaching and Research. At Norland, I focus on leading 
on the pedagogical innovation and curriculum development. And I also have an oversight of the Norland research. So there's fantastic research that goes on at Norland and there's a wide range of expertise that you will be able to find out about um, using the website. Um, we may touch on some this evening. Um, and then as well as long as as well as that, we um, look at the student support learning cycle and think about implementation and improvement. So that's really what I'm doing at Norland. And then, of course, I engage in my own research and it's always been focused on pedagogy and practice in early childhood. And I am particularly inspired by um, posthumanist perspectives which are very interesting and really really applicable to young children because they give an opportunity to really focus on how children engage with the materiality of their worlds. So that's a little bit about me and I'm going to hand on to my colleague Lucy. Thanks Becky. So one moment there's too much clicking going on here. Uh, so my name is Lucy Krebs. I'm Deputy Head of Learning and Teaching here at Norland and Student Engagement Manager, which means that I manage student feedback. So we're very passionate about adapting to the needs of our students here at Norland. So that's part of my role, along with Hattie, actually, who is our Head of Students. So I trained at Norland between 2003 and 2005, so about one million years ago in sort of real terms. Um, and then I worked as a private nanny in Christ Hospital near Horsham with this lovely little girl that you see here who is now horrifyingly 18. So that's something that you have to realise when you work as a nanny is that your life is measured in other human lives. Um, but yeah, we're still in touch. She was my bridesmaid in 2017. Um, it is very much an emotional investment and it's something that I'm very passionate about when I'm teaching here at Norland. So I came back to Norland in 2013 um, where I achieved my MA at Penn Green alongside full time work. Um, and my research focuses on empowering children. So I do a lot of things around mosaic approach, trying to find ways to capture children's voices through perhaps drawing, um, narrative, taking photographs, anything like that. So that's my role here. And I'm going to hand back to Becky to tell you all about our new degree and diploma, which is very exciting. Thank you, Lucy. Yeah, so we're hugely excited this evening to be able to tell you about our new degree and diploma, which subject to validation, we're going to be running from September 2023. Um, what we've been doing over the past year or so is really looking closely at the degree and the Norland Diploma and unpacking it and making sure it's current and up to date and full of cutting edge research and that there are really fantastic opportunities for students to engage with the latest understandings about early childhood development and care. And this is a review that the university has undertaken because it's something that all universities do. And it's a new programme which is subject to validation. And we're really thrilled to have just put all our paperwork through and we're now waiting to hear back from our validation panel, which is a group of internal and external experts that we have consulted all the way along the degree preparations and the diploma preparations to make sure that it's robust and it's rigorous and it's on par with other early childhood education and care degrees and also that the diploma really reflects the best for the Norland nannies. Um, and we know that this programme we hope will be available from September 2023. So just to sort of think very closely now about the actual degree, it's a three year course and it focuses on how young children and babies develop and learn. And it's got a focus on their well-being, the health, how to ensure that all children are included in learning and education and care. And also because of the nature of it being at Norland, it's a very high focus on working with parents and professional development. And just like any early childhood studies degree, it has many disciplines that it draws across. So we're really pleased that we were able to draw an expertise within our team on neuroscience and psychology, and also child health and philosophy and the social sciences. So across the team, there are many experts who are able to draw on their own research in order to make sure that the curriculum is research informed, but also that to make sure that the sessions are enjoyable and um, add value to your curriculum experience. Um, and then each of the three years are divided into three trimesters. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in a while, but there's time in between the trimesters for placement and also Norland. 
And then the third and the final year, you complete a work-based project, which is um, the same for any degree where you complete a dissertation. And then you focus on an early year topic of your choice. And Lucy, just a few moments ago, was mentioning the mosaic approach. And I know that, that other students have been inspired by that in their dissertations this year. And I'm sure we're going to hear from Hattie about hers in a little while. But there's a really great opportunity for you to develop an area of your own interest across the degree and then explore that in independent study in your third year, being supervised by one of the lecturing team. And then during the summer trimester of your third year, there's a focus on teaching skills that are really relevant to future employment. And in fact, that's been going on right now. And I know that students have been really enjoying time in many different activities across this week. So that will be something that will be available with the new degree as well. So just to pick up on a few of the core threads in the degree and diploma, the professional practitioner is a, a highlight. So all the way through the years, one, two and three, there is an opportunity for you to really carefully craft and develop your philosophy, pedagogy and practice of what it means to actually work with young children and nurture and support their care and development. You have really good opportunity in different modules to be able to explore the theories behind this, but also to make links with your own practice um, in placements. And placements are woven all the way through the degree and you have the opportunity in the placements to gain the early childhood graduate practitioner competencies. And these are sector recognized. They've been developed by a group of universities across the UK that have come together to really make sure that um, early childhood studies students have the opportunity to gain recognized competencies as well as the academic skills. And that's something that Norland does really well because of the diploma, there's opportunities for you to be continually putting your understandings and your knowledge and your skills into practice. And then across the degree, there are some really great themes. So, of course, play is there because we all know that that's a core way that children develop and learn and grow through play. And so that's woven through each year of study. And then drawing on the expertise within the Norland site, there is a, a strand that runs along self-regulation. And there are opportunities for you to really in-depth explore what it means to be self-regulated as a practitioner, but also how to support young children in their self-regulation and co-regulation as they develop and grow and learn. And then we've also foregrounded really important themes like health and equality, diversity and inclusion. So there's opportunities to look outside of the world that you might be in, in whilst you're studying and think about global childhoods and multiple childhoods and what childhood looks like across many different contexts. And then we've woven in really important themes that are really relevant at the moment in terms of sustainability for um, what that might mean for childhood and for children's futures. And then we're hugely excited to be able to offer you some optional modules. We've got ones focusing on um, curricular areas such as children's literature. We've got a, a STEM focus with science, technology, engineering and math. And then we've got music and drama. We've also really foregrounded important themes that you may encounter as a nanny, a Norland nanny, such as tra trauma and working with multiples and siblings and also sustainable practice and what it might mean to be an entrepreneur as a nanny. So finally, from me, what we wanted to do is just give you the opportunity to see a really big overview of how the degree pans out. And what you can see in front of you are all of the modules that you would take across each of the year of study, including the optional ones. And there's a challenge in there for you to say, for instance, spot how self-regulation is woven across years one, two and three. Um, and then you'll see there year four, it says the newly qualified nanny year. And that one is where you have your final year of the diploma and you have 12 months in employment experience. Thank, thanks, Becky. So I'm going to talk to you here about a little bit more detail 
essentially in terms of what these modules uh, entail. So for your BA, I'm going to draw your attention to the learning development and pedagogical theory module. So we'll be looking at the key names and theories in explaining how and why children learn. So if you've ever looked after a tiny baby and they keep taking their sock off and throwing it on the ground, you go, why are you doing that? So annoying. We can explain that through theory. And actually by getting this understanding of the way that children's brains work, why they behave the way they do, we can respond better as practitioners. And that's essentially what we're trying to achieve. We'll look at pedagogies from around the world. So if you're not familiar with any of the terms that we're throwing at you today, don't worry, we cover that throughout the course. So pedagogy is how children learn. And in different countries, depending on cultural context, etc., cetera, um, children learn and are taught in different ways. So we'll look at things like Reggio Emilia approach, Montessori, Tevariki, which is from New Zealand, all of these different things and compare them with how we approach play and learning here in England. Uh, we'll look at typical and atypical development as part of this module. So um, we tend to step away from the idea of age being how children develop. So at this age, they should be behaving in this way. And instead looking at the progress of learning. So if you're thinking about, say, uh, the development of reading and mark making, um, how that goes through stages regardless of age. So we'll be looking a little bit at that. And the role of the environment in maximising learning. So things like communication friendly spaces, uh, ensuring that clutter is kept to a minimum, things at a child's level, all of that kind of stuff. So that will all be theoretical application. Um, and then we have the Norland Diploma, which is all about practical skills. So basic care skills does what it says on the tin. Um, we'll be looking at nappies. So that's reusable nappies as well as disposable. The process of changing a nappy, the importance of singing and speaking to babies as you do so to build up those communication skills. We'll be looking at topping and tailing, which is to do with bathing children or bathing tiny babies, sorry, um, and how you go about that. The classic making up a cotton pram. So those of you who've been to an open day will have seen our beautiful carriage prams so we will look at those and they do exist in practice I had one when I was a nanny um, we'll look at making up a formula feed how to tie slings in different ways um, just last week we had fitting car seats so that if anyone who's tried to fit a car seat will know that this is sometimes a complicated business so we'll be covering that as part of a module uh, we'll be looking at safety in the home and the famous virtual babies so the formative assessment which means that you don't get graded on it but it's an opportunity to have that experience is to take the virtual babies home overnight it is a rite of passage here at Norland we've all done it we've all been very tired the following day um, and they don't smell as nice as real babies, but they do give you that experience of having to get up and react to that baby crying in the night. So that's a very brief introduction to um, a couple of your first year modules. Now, on this next slide, we have got an overview of a typical week here at Norland. So you'll see that we've got two days dedicated to your practical skills, such as study skills. So when you come to Norland, we'll take you through how to structure an essay, for example, because we know that that jump from A level or cash level three or BTEC or um, whatever it is you're doing before you get to us will need a little bit of work in terms of um, adapting to degree level study. So that's one of the things that we will cover in your first trimester. You'll have your sewing and food nutrition practical sessions on those days, as well as an FNN theory, theory online session. So that's for two days. And you'll see that you've also got some uh, free periods there as well. On the other two days, you have got your BA lectures alongside your basic care skills module. So um, this can be feel like quite a full on day. I'm sure Hattie would agree with me in terms of being in the lecture room. But for you guys, you'll have half a day where you're doing those practical skills. So it's a little bit of headspace for you. And then on Fridays, although we don't have formal lectures, there's often external speakers or value added curriculum. So you'll see here we've got training in self-defense um, and first aid running alongside each other. We have speakers as well, such as um, speakers on anti-racist practice or uh, sex education with children, all that kind of stuff stuff. So Fridays, although arguably when you look at your timetable, you think oh, I've got loads of free Fridays. There's lots of value added stuff in there as well, which is really great to get your teeth into. Which takes us on to the idea of workload. So unlike other university degrees, we are quite full on because you've got those two courses running side by side. So on top of your taught timetable, you'll need to ensure that you're reading to support your assignments. I'm always telling my dissertation supervisees, read, 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 and then you get a better analysis. And that's true right from day one. Um, you'll need to write your assignments, of course, and there has been a reduction in the number of assignments on the new degree, but you still have to get those done. So you'll need to familiarise yourself with your deadlines at the very beginning. Um, 
so that you are prepared and getting ready for each of those assignments as they arise. You'll also need to meet with your tutors, whether that's to, for assignment support or with your personal tutor who offers you pastoral care. Um, all of these people are important in your Norland journey. And of course, you also have to have your extracurricular activity. So all the fun stuff. And you also are students. So you have to make time to have a good time because, you know, all work and no play is not good for anybody. It's about maintaining that well-being and making sure you're keeping on top of stuff while having a good time as well. Hattie, did you want to say a bit more about the workload? Yes. So um, in first year, I thought that it would be really impossible to have a job alongside Norland and I think I also told myself that because I thought I was first year so I'll be slightly lazy um but actually when it came to second year I realized I actually have loads of free time and I'm living a student life and I would actually quite like an extra bit of money in my pocket as well so um alongside babysitting shifts and nannying that you pick up through placements as well you do have time to have part-time jobs and I feel like that's also quite a important point because that was something I thought I would never be able to do and actually Sunday was my last shift in my hospitality job that I've had for two years in Bath and it's allowed me to develop so many skills it may not have been working with children it was producing bagels but um it was actually a really nice break and it also gave me the chance to meet so many other students from other unis and kind of widen my social circle and I was still always able to keep on top of my work. I'm still able to go out, have fun on the weekends and, you know, even, even midweek pick up babysitting shifts and I'm never feeling as if there's too much work, but obviously it is all about balance, meeting with your tutors and um, using your time wisely is always going to help with that, but it is possible to have a really good student life balance on top of everything that you've seen in the timetable. Thanks, Hattie. Um, and that's a really important point, actually. So thank you for raising it, is that actually most of our students do work alongside their studies. So if you're thinking, you know, all oh, these fees are a little bit high, um, am I going to be able to do that? The vast majority of students do. Um, and as Hattie rightly says, sometimes it's doing hospitality work, sometimes it's babysitting, all kinds of different things. Although we wouldn't recommend working all night and then coming into college the following day, because that's pretty exhausting. So. Moving away from the heaviness of workload, we're going to show you some of the things that our students have created. So you can see some examples from sewing, from food and nutrition, and from the holistic assessment as well. So that's where the wooden spoons are um, being used to tell stories and sing nursery rhymes. Um, Hattie, do you want to talk about some of the things that you've created? Um, yeah, so I think the sewing projects are always changing throughout the years because, um, as Lucy previously mentioned, the staff at Norland are really really empowered to make positive change and you know if so the projects are always changing to adapt to feedback and kind of make sure that everyone's skills are always being stretched so I know what I did in first year isn't the same as what the first years are doing now but um everything I've learned has been amazing in first year I made a children's apron which I've already given to one of my charges and when I gave it to him he was 18 months and now he's three and it's been given to his younger brother. So that's really nice that, you know, the things that you get to make in college are being used. In second year, you make a fabric friend, which is, you know, the, your kind of first taste of making a toy. And um, you do an interactive cushion cover. And in my third year, which has been my favourite year of sewing, and um, bearing in mind, I couldn't even thread a needle when I first came to Norland. So the fact that I am now loving sewing so much has been such a nice change um in third year i have made a um cape booked off based off a world book day character and um a blanket a taggy blanket for a baby which i was able to kind of work on patchwork skills and yeah and as you can see there's some fnn recipes which again as a student the fnn side of norland is also amazing because you get a really nice meal to take home with you at the end of the day or you can pop it in your freezer and have it for lunch as well and all the recipes you do in FNN, I've used so many of them on placements. And even as my house of students, we usually use our Norland recipe book when we're meal planning together. So everything you learn, you do, you do actually use. Thanks, Hattie. And 
that's a really important point is that if you've never sewn before, if you've never cooked before, it doesn't matter because we will start from the basics at the beginning. So if you're an established cook, sometimes you might be like, why are you teaching me this? I already know. But it, it makes sure that everybody has got those skills when they go out to be a nanny at the end of their training to be able to prepare a full meal plan for children from age you know, weaning right up to the age of eight, nine or 21 in Natty's case. So I'm going to hand you over to Hattie now to take you through her Norland journey so far. Thank you, Lucy. So um, as you've all heard, my name is Harriet, but I'm probably most well known as Hattie around college. I'm 21 and I'm currently in my last year, which is, I think, the scariest thing to be saying. I think I've got three weeks left at Norland, but it feels like yesterday that it was my first day. Um, I'm originally from Northern Ireland and coming to Norland was always a dream of mine ever since I think I was like 12. Um, and a big part of that was I had a really, really happy childhood. I was an only child. And when people used to say to me, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'd say, I want to be a mummy, I want to be a mum. And I was fascinated by the thought of having a baby with me 24 seven. So the baby doll in all those pictures was actually called Sister which um slightly sad um but um I based my GCSE and A level choices off the thought of coming to Norland and as you can see my A level choices were food nutrition science health and social care and RE but those subjects aren't actually necessarily linked to the early years which I think is quite an important thing you don't have to know you know everything about the early years before coming to Norland I actually knew nothing I knew I loved working with children and the only experience I did have was through volunteer work babysitting but you know I hadn't been on you know big placements that some of my friends went on with their level threes everyone comes in with completely different qualifications and levels of understanding and I really did come to Norland with the bare minimum knowledge on um the early years but um next slide please Lucy <laughs> thanks um so over my three years of Norland, I have had the best time and I've made the bestest friends. I have had amazing placements from nurseries to primary schools to special educational needs schools, as well as many, many family placements. Some of those being in Bath and um, some in London. And I recently was in my first rural placement out in the Oscars of Bath. And that was also amazing. Um, and over the three years, I have learned so much and um, as I said I had very minimum knowledge on the early years when I first came to Norland but it's a very inclusive course in the fact that you all are you know raised up to the same level through a like plentitude of different assignments such as presentations to essays to um you know role play situations so if essay writing maybe isn't your forte which it certainly wasn't mine to begin with there are plenty of other ways for you to showcase your skills and that's the same with the diploma as well I'm very much I've always been a practical person so inside Norland was obviously something I absolutely loved and sewing has been something that I've definitely grown to love over the three years um but currently I as I said I have three weeks left and I'm in what we call our employment week which is before we go off onto our newly qualified nanny year, where we recap all of these really important skills that it takes to be a nanny. And um, we have lots of really fun day trips. So I've been to forest school for the day. I've had a baby massage course, first aid training. We all went to London in our formal uniform to find the famous postcodes of London, which was, yeah, as you can see, and that was an amazing day with um, all your closest friends that you make. And as Lucy also mentioned, our car seat training. Um, and there have been so many other things that we've done um, and still to come. And our Heritage Day is on Friday. And this is where we get to share all of our work um, to our family and friends. So I'm very lucky that my family are able to come over from to see what I've been doing for the past three years. So yeah, very exciting. Um, so um, this is my dissertation. So when it came to deciding what I wanted to base my dissertation on I knew that I wanted it to be based around children's food and nutrition and as you can see I have quite an interesting um, dissertation title of Peppa Pig tastes better 
um, a research investigation discovering the external influences on a child's food consumption and the internal influences on a child's perception of food following the mosaic approach, which Lucy has mentioned is about capturing basically the child's voice in research. Um, children's food nutrition is something I've always been interested in. As I said, I studied it for GCSE and A-levels and while still at Norland, but I would never consider myself an academic academic person at all um, and for most of first year in Ireland to be honest I was scraping passes um, because I wasn't um, I wasn't seeking the support that is on offer I didn't I don't think I ever went to the library in first year which is a very silly mistake um, and it was once I started you know using the support that is on offer which is very easily on offer and reaching out to my tutors and reaching out to lecturers that's when I started to realize what I needed to do to get the grades from that jump from A level to degree. And um, so for when it came to writing my dissertation, I knew to do well, I had to choose something that I was going to be interested in. And um, that was for nutrition. Um, so I never thought I would enjoy writing a dissertation. It was a really, really daunting thought to me, but actually third year has been my favorite year at Norland so far. And I've never loved writing and being invested in something so more in my life. Your dissertation nearly becomes your own little charge. You've you've worked with so many children and then your dissertation nearly becomes another child that you've worked with um, because you put so much into it. And it, um, it was really, it was really, really interesting to find something that I enjoyed learning about so much. And during your dissertation, you go on a placement to gather your research. So I was able to go and work with a little boy to help me with my dissertation. So he was a massive help in the writing process as well. Um, but I've been so supported by all staff members throughout the three years of Norland, and especially with your dissertation. Um, but Lucy was my <laughs> dissertation supervisor. And honestly, I could not have done it without her. She was a massive, massive help. And she empowered me to work so hard and want to do well for myself and for everyone. Um, so yes, I owe her a big thank you for giving me this new love for learning that I definitely want to take forward with me. Um, so as I said, I'm preparing to move on to my NQN year where I'll be moving to London and I will actually be doing my NQN with my London residential placement family, which is a really amazing opportunity to go back to a family that Norland introduced me to. And that's something that lots of pupils get the chance to do. You get to go back and work for, you know, placement families or placement family friends. And, you know, there's so many opportunities from your placements. Um, but although I'm very excited for Enkia and I am going to miss Bath, the college, all my friends being so nearby um, a lot because Norland really is this big family. Um, and moving to London was never something I wanted to do in first year. I think I was a bit of a home bird, but actually it is the most exciting thought now and I'm raring to go. And finally, after writing my dissertation, um, I would actually quite like to complete a master's degree, which I think when I said that to my mum, she nearly dropped her coffee all over herself and she was like, you, write a, write a master's. And I was like, yeah, because I actually really, really, really learn, love learning about children's nutrition and their relationships with food. And that's something that I'll hopefully be able to take into my nannying career and hopefully somewhere, somewhere else in the future. So, yeah, that's a little bit about my journey. And um, but feel free to ask any questions at the end if you feel that you would like any more clarity. But thank you. That's me, I think. <laughs> thank you so much. That was really, really, really interesting. And we have got questions, so that's really good. Really fascinating. Thank you, Hattie. Thank you, Lucy. And thank you, Becca. Right. So I've got a few questions. Please carry on putting the questions into the Q&A box um, and we'll try to get them, get through as many as we possibly can. Um, just a couple of questions about um, the workload, because I think that's that's come up before in, in obviously in the presentation. Um, and I think this is quite good for you, Hattie. It's about really comparing that you mentioned earlier on about the leap from A levels to degree. Can you just kind of explain what that involved and how you found it and are any kind of ideas, you know, what kind of different types of work you're expected to do really and how you found that leap, obviously you mentioned in your in your section, but just a bit more information would be fantastic. Of course, so for my A-levels, I did three essay-based subjects. 
Um, so I thought um, coming to uni and writing an essay would be the easiest thing. But actually writing an essay at A-level is completely different to writing an essay at um, level four in first year. Level four? Yeah, level four. Um, because you need to, I think the big jump is the referencing. And I think that's something that um, lots of first years have never done before. Um, and it takes, you know, a little bit to get used to. And, you know, sometimes I would still make mistakes, which I'm sure Lucy, who marks my dissertation, will will have noticed. But, um, you know, that is, I feel like that's probably the biggest jump, the referencing. It's not necessarily that the content is any harder or that it's really, really difficult to understand. It's just, it's more... Um, your responsibility to do that extra reading and for you to take that initiative to do the reading and look outside the box and obviously the referencing is something but yet again there's so many master classes and lectures on referencing on how to access the reading and you're supported by all the staff and um, by doing that it's not like you're given an essay and just pushed away to do it and especially when you first move there is lots of support in how to you know once you get your feedback back after an essay, you can talk to the marker and work together on your next steps. And if you listen to that feedback, you will you will do better. That 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 is something that I um I have discovered that if I actually listen to what I'm being told to do and um, to do better, it it will happen. So yeah. Oh, that sounds great. And actually one of the questions we had was what specific question was what is the support on offer for essays and assignments? So maybe Lucy and, and Becky can kind of explain a bit more about the actual support that you offer and maybe that leads into a question about different types of learning obviously students have got different styles of learning and things like that is there anything you, you can add to that for us sure so in terms of support for anything you've got your student support team which is Lexi and Mog presently um, and they can help with anything from proofreading to assignment writing to putting together a PowerPoint to you know you name it they can help you with it and uh, they can also help you if you think you have an additional learning need such as dyslexia, dyspraxia, ADHD, anything like that they can do the tests and all that kind of thing. In terms of your module support so maybe you've had a lecture and you think well that was a lot of terms I didn't understand go and see the tutor who taught it. Um, for your assignment support you can go to any of the module tutors you also have your personal tutor who can help you with anything that's going on at home maybe getting that work-life balance right so um just this week i had a student email me for example to ask for advice on organization um and as hattie rightly says you know you can go to any of us so if you have a particular rapport with one of us you can come and have a chat anytime people regularly pop into the office just for a chit chat um, or drop us a message on Teams. so we are available ludicrously available some might say for a university <laughs> brilliant I've got another question about a dissertation and this is quite a valid question if you you know don't come across that term how many dissertations are there there every year I think it's just the one isn't it just the one at the very just end the um but we do have research focused assignments at the first and second year in the new degree right. um which is due to be validated this June so um that's what you guys will be doing so in terms of your first year you've got an, an observation focused uh, research project where you will observe children and analyze that with theory and then in the second year it's about interviews to parents so we're gradually introducing you to those research terms as you go through um and half the time it's the word dissertation that makes people go oh dissertation but actually it's just a really big essay so if you think of it that way it feels slightly safer I think that's a um, really good idea actually <laughs> very good way of putting it I think Lucy and can I also just add about the way that um the dissertation is done at Norland it's split into um three two two sections two sections um which makes it a lot more manageable as well and um, some of my friends at other universities are currently um do a 10,000 more dissertation in a few weeks and they haven't started and um, but that's not the case at Norland you know it's split up which also makes it a lot more manageable and for you to seek that support as well and um, just feel like that's quite an important bit to add. Fantastic. Um, is there a set number of optional modules that are compulsory in the new degree? I'm, I'm happy to answer that one well each year there are four optional modules but you would only take two of those 
So you, in order to make up the number of credits, so every degree across the whole of the UK has a certain number of credits that you have to make up each year to get a full degree. And so you have core modules. Um, it might be helpful to go back to the slide, Lucy, if that's possible, that's got all of the different modules on it. That's helpful. So here we go. This is a really useful slide because it shows you the core modules, which are the ones that are listed in length. And the top part of them are all of the degree ones. And then the top, the bottom half, you'll see move into um, food and nutrition and basic care skills and sewing. So there's the diploma modules and they're all ones that you have to study. And then you'll see at the bottom of all of each year's one, two and three, there are four optional modules and you choose two of those. So it's dependent really on your interests and what we've really tried to do in the design of the new degree in diploma is, is give you as much breadth there to be able to choose from as you develop and as uh, going through your degree. And that's really helpful going back to the dissertation because you'll start to find areas that you become really passionate about based on your placement experience and also what you're learning about in modules. So having the opportunity to choose modules is really, really good. It will help you as you then start focusing on thinking about your own independent study. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that. Um, I've got another question. Does the analysis with theory marked in a way that counts towards your final mark? So I just wondered if you could touch on how the marking process works, um, potentially about what pass rates we have and things. That would be something quite interesting for students that are looking at degrees, obviously, um, comparing to others. So if you can give us a bit more information about that, that would be great. That's a big question. Uh, so in terms of the first year, that I doesn't mean, count towards... I mean like that one, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, first year doesn't count towards your classification. So that's the time to kind of um, adjust to degree level study. So um, we tend to find that in the first module, there are quite a few refers. So um, I'm going to be using some terms that you might not be familiar with here. So a refer is an opportunity to get them up back, look at it, take some feedback, meet with the tutor, make some changes and resubmit it uh, with a capped mark. Um, so in your first year, that's the time to kind of have that practice, maybe make a few mistakes. So something that commonly happens is that students upload a blank document on their first submission or something like that. Um, so yeah, that first year is fine as, you know, move on with your life after so that's gone. Um, and that provides a foundational knowledge for your second year. And then from the second year is when we start to count it towards classification. I'm not going to go into masses of detail about how we mark with rubrics and how we decide grades and all that kind of stuff, because it is the end of the day and it could cause a nap. So um, <laughs> if you do have any further questions about that, you can always ask when you get here. It's similar to any other university course. Fantastic. Brilliant. And you can always email us as well. So um, we've got another question. Do you have any recommendations of specific reading books or articles um, so people can get ahead with their studies in general? Any kind of top tips when it comes to that? Do you want to go, Lucy? And I'll, no, you, I'll, go, you go first. I'm <laughs> muted there. Um, I would, what I was going to say is that there is actually a reading list that gets sent out to all students once they've accepted their um, offer at the Norland um, sites. So there are, there are lists there of some really good core texts, but there are a wealth of different texts that you can find, you know, everywhere on the internet, freely available, and also secondhand books. And that what, what can be really useful are early childhood studies core texts, which give you, Lucy was just mentioning about the foundation in the first year, that just introduce you in a very broad way to some of the key theories and key ideas about early childhood education and care. Lucy, did you want to add to that? Yes, I do. Um, so there are, what you tend to find when you study a particular subject is that you become very enthusiastic about certain texts. And for me, uh, one of my, the most inspirational ones that I've ever read is uh, Margaret Donaldson's Children's Minds. And it's a brief introduction to um, theory, but it's written in a really uh, lovely way. So I was reading it at bedtime because I'm like that. Um, but it's something that is a really nice way to kind of segue you into that academic world because it's referenced, but it's also talking about children as people rather than as subjects to be studied. It's an absolutely wonderful book. So that's uh, Margaret Donaldson's Children's Minds. 
And I'll add one as well. You, you've just triggered my memory, Lucy. The first um, early childhood text I ever read was on, I did a, a teacher training PGCE before going on to teach. And I read Kathy Nut Brown's Threads of Thinking and it completely inspired me. I think I've moved you know, in, in a very different direction since then, but I absolutely love that book. And I can remember thinking, oh my goodness, I'm doing the right thing when I read that. Brilliant. Fantastic. Like I said, there will be a reading list sent out as well, but that's really good. Um, good to kind of head to the library and dig those out from somewhere, I think. Um, just a couple of questions linked to um, very brief ones. In the new degree, are there exams um, and obviously assignments and set essays? Could you just reiterate how it's broken down? So we have a range of different assessment types. Um, there are no written exams, but we do have practical skills exams. So um, essentially we've kind of got along the route of understanding that in today's world, there's never a time really where you don't have access to information, but there are certain skills that you need to be able to do without looking at a list. So things like changing an appy, all that kind of thing. Um, but those are very uh, guided. So if there's something that you haven't done, we might ask a few questions to kind of prompt you in the right direction, that kind of thing. Um, but there are also, essays, presentations, there's something called Viva, which is like a conversation role play. Um, there are sort of poster presentations where you'll be creating a children's play environment, uh, setting up activities and justifying. So there's lots of different ways that we are trying to ascertain what you've learned, because we understand that being a fabulous nanny doesn't mean that you can write a fabulous essay. Um, so we have got quite a spectrum of different assignments um, in the new degree, and I'm very excited about it, as you could probably tell. <laughs> I can tell absolutely um we've got a question um really I think if Hattie can remember back to her very first week because this is actually quite interesting so one of our um uh, listeners tonight has had a gap year um and she's just asking do students get eased into uni life or was it a really full-on in that first week so perhaps you can cast your eye back to when you started Hattie and just give us some uh, some information about that so when you first arrive at Norland, your first week is your welcome week. So you're not, you know, sitting in class and um, preparing for your first essay within the first week. Um, it could be quite full on in the terms of socialising and meeting the rest of your set. But I remember it being a really, really, really fun week where we went on like, you know, a few scavenger hunts around Bath. Um, we went to an outdoor pursuit day, which was a great icebreaker for the whole year. Um, but you have a few lectures on, you know, what's expected in the year ahead of you. I'm pretty sure that was a thing. But, you know, you're not sitting down and um, starting your essays within the first week. And as the weeks go on, it's very much this is what we're going to be doing. And uh, like you're introduced to your topics very gently. There's no go off and you know, you're very supported the whole way through and the first week actually was so much fun so much fun brilliant um quick question about the fnn theory is that going to be always online the fnn theory i'm just looking at the timetable that were that you showed earlier is that always going to be online yes um and the reason for that is essentially the building does not fit uh, another lecture in it so <laughs> essentially it will be online but it does focus on entirely on theory it is interactive so um it uses a uh, sorry the teach the bleh, the lecturers uh, use something called nearpod which has got interactive quizzes and all that kind of thing videos that kind of stuff so although it is online learning hopefully it will not be flashbacks of lockdown it will be very <laughs> focused and brief and it's, it's quite it's quite nice as well that if, you know, as you've seen the timetable, you know, you're in person quite a lot and it's quite nice to have your f &N at home. And for example, I live with four other, um, three other um, Norland students and we'll sit down and put it on the TV and we'll sit together and do it. And it's actually quite a nice way to come down from, you know, you know, a busy week of lectures. But it's it's not like, as you said, flashbacks to online um, learning with COVID. It's, it's actually quite a nice break as well brilliant um this is someone who has come to um one of our open days and it's basically about the obviously as we're talking about food and nutrition um and perhaps patty can answer this as well it's about purchasing the ingredients 
Um, Hattie said that she's been doing this last year. Are the baby massages for a school all included in the tuition fee or is that additional cost as well as transport? So if you could just give us a little bit of information about obviously additional um, costs and things like that. Obviously, you've mentioned about um, food, nutrition, etc. Um, so, no, you don't have to pay for any of your ingredients um, or anything in FN. The only thing you will be paying for is your practical uniform, which and your apron in terms of FN. And um, everything is provided um, as well as all the equipment and the things like baby massage and the trips. Those are all included in the tuition price as well. Apart from you may want to grab a lunch with your friends you know, on some of those trips, which you cover, but um, no, it's that all um, included. The only thing that I've paid for in f &M was some of my Bake Off in third year, some of my Bake Off ingredients. Um, and that was because I wanted to win. So I wanted to go the extra mile. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much, Hattie. Um, how long is each module? Is there a specific kind of time frame around them or... Um, is it quite hard to kind of work out how long each module is? Is there something you can give us a bit more information about that? Don't mind which one. <laughs> um, yes, so it's worked out per cat point. Uh, so in terms, it's an hour per cat point, essentially. Um, and each lecture is two and a half hours long. I know that sounds intense, but it is broken up into a little bit of talk and chalk, which means we just talk to you um activities interaction getting up and moving um all that kind of stuff so we try to be as uh, hands-on as possible even in the theory lectures so for example up on the top of the uh, cupboards there i've got some models that i made to teach theory so there's always that interaction going on um so for example a 10 cat point module is four weeks long um but that doesn't mean that the deadline will be immediately after that Okay, thank you very much. Um, another question about, um, just finding it here, the, specifically if you're interested in, if you're an international student and you were coming from a US college, is there a different type of support? Are there different methods and things like that that you would need to kind of understand if obviously different than other, uh, you know, American university compared to UK university? Is there specific support that we can offer international students when it comes to that? with a new degree? Yeah, so um, this is something that we have just been kind of adjusting to over the past year. And we've actually got three students currently from the US um, and they have talked about how that would have been helpful. So this is something that we'll be implementing from next year. Um, and we also have something called a buddy system. So you will be buddied with a student who's got similar experiences to you and that they will be able to talk you through any key terms or anything like that. And they're great because they are available 24-7, um, well, student hours. So I assume that they sleep at some point, uh, but in terms of being able to interact with them uh, whenever you need them, they'll be there. Thank you very much. Um, we've got a question about independent study hours. So how many independent study hours would you suggest per week? Or is that kind of how long is a piece of string? <laughs> It's a little bit of how long is a piece of string. It depends how fast you, a worker you are. And I tend to find that when I'm writing assignments, if I'm really enthusiastic about a subject, I'll get it done very quickly. Whereas if I'm resisting it, then it takes a little bit longer. Um, it also depends on how you engage with things like texts and that kind of stuff. Um, but it's, I think it's hard to say. Becky, do you have any kind of... Yeah, I, I mean, I would agree with you, Lucy. And I think, I think it's really difficult to give a set time but the rule of thumb is that the more you read the better you write and the more that you it, you know really immerse yourself in any topic the more that it will show through and one of the skills that you need to develop over the course of a degree is being able to um, have some critical perspective and so therefore you have to look at different um, ideas and different um, authors and different ways of representing the same um, theme and that could even be your placement that's another perspective on the world um, and then the more you do that the richer your assignments are it's a bit like Cassie talking about the bake-off and going the extra mile because you really were determined to win so I think it's it's really down to um, how much you're prepared to do but reading is a key skill to get a habit of mind with in terms of doing a degree Great, fantastic. I've got a question about the uniform, actually, and I could ask Lucy this because obviously she's an Norlander and she wasn't going to wear her uniform this evening. 
um but obviously from you guys obviously a uniform is a huge part of Norland um and the question that seems to come up quite a lot is obviously being recognized in your uniform etc and you know when you should wear your uniform and what the responsibilities and obviously you know upholding the the, the Norland standards perhaps you could both talk about how important the uniform is to you and why we have it etc that'd be really helpful I think Sure. So I'll be very brief because um, Hattie's obviously got more recent experience. Um, you know, Kate's like joke there that I didn't want to wear my uniform today. It's, it's actually that I can't because I can't fit in it anymore. Um, but I would wear it and I have worn it for non-uniform days when the students are in non-uniform. I occasionally put it on. It freaks people out. Um, but I am very proud of my uniform. I'm very proud of being an Orlander. I, just, I joke at open days that if you cut me in half, I'd have an N written in the middle of me. Um, and it is really important to be that role model for children. So I showed you that picture of myself with Pops and that was at my graduation. And uh, she was a bit bemused because I used to wear my uniforms twice a year in practice just because mum liked it and that she would have had me wear it every day, to be honest. And when we went into the room um, and she saw all my friends there, she said, oh, lots of Lucy. And this little girl who's really shy was able to go into that room and just begin interacting with people because she was like, oh, I know that you're safe. You are a safe person. And that's what the uniform stands for, is that that knowledge and that, you know, being open to communication with children and with families as well. So something that happened to me as a student constantly, which is a little bit daunting, if I'm honest, for things like, um, oh, my three year old's having trouble sleeping. Can you give me some advice? And I'd be like, well, I don't know your three year old. So sorry, but no. Um, but, you know, if you want me to come and do some babysitting, happy to do that, all that kind of thing. So, yeah, it is it is quite the responsibility and it's something to really think about if you're coming to Norland. Are you prepared to take on that responsibility, be proud of what you're wearing um, and also the hat line that you get permanently forever yeah no I agree with Lucy I'm very proud of my uniform and um, I'm very excited to wear it in the next couple of weeks as well because it'll probably be one of the last times I get to wear it in a little while and um, one of my core memories was when my uniform first arrived and um, before arriving to Norland and how special I felt and it honestly it feels like an achievement I've wanted to go to Norland for so long so finally having the uniform and knowing that you know I was going to be part of it was very exciting and um it's actually it's actually very comfortable and um, I wore school uniform right up until I left school and um, in upper sixth and my Norland uniform has been my comfiest uniform out of all of them so although it may look um somewhat peculiar with the hat and the brogues it's actually a very very comfortable practical uniform just don't put it in the tumble dryer that's the only thing brilliant we are slowly running out of time but I'm trying to squeeze in as many as I possibly can um one of the questions we have is um obviously about the sets um during the normal day so and obviously we've got three years um could you kind of explain how obviously when certain sets are in and how that actually works with regards to the timetable Okay, so a typical set is around 105 students and they are split into four academic groups or five practical groups. Um, so this is like a little maths test that you can do. Uh, so in terms of a standard academic group, you have around 22-ish. Uh, uh, so very, very small lecturing groups. Um, and then in your practical ones, you're in groups of 20. And that's because essentially FNN can only fit that many. And so... Um, you're always in these small groups unless you've got an external speaker or occasionally you might be in as a full set. We tend to have two sets in college at a time, but they work on the reverse of the timetable. So you saw the two days, two days, so they flip around. So we've got four lecturing rooms um, and that's how we we fit everybody in essentially. Um, and then the other set is on placement. So you'll do eight weeks in college, four weeks in placement. In your first year, you'll do your first eight weeks in college and then your four weeks in placement. In the second year, you do four weeks college, four weeks placement, four, we four weeks college. And in the third year, you go straight out into placement and eight weeks college at the end. And you'll be tested on that at the end of the yeah. <laughs> So obviously, that's the first question we asked. I've got yeah, one yeah. leading on to that. Obviously, um, what are the breaks throughout the year? So you kind of obviously answered that with regards to when you're actually in. So um, I think that's probably answered that question. I've got time for one more question, and this is for Hattie, if that's possible. Um, it's about sewing, um, really. Best kind of place to get sewing 
a good, you know, things that you need to do, you know, is there anything you think you need to do before you come to Norland? Obviously, Lucy mentioned earlier, everyone comes with a clean slate, obviously starting from, from the very beginning. Um, any kinds of top tips when it comes to, you know, you mentioned about ingredient costs with regards to projects and things like that for sewing. So um, when I came to Norland, I had nothing and um, I had no skills at all. Um, so I would not worry at all about you know feeling you need to start practice obviously if you want to practice that's great but you don't have to you won't be judged if you arrive on the first day and um can't do anything it's a very nurturing environment and um you always give someone a laugh when you prick yourself with a needle as well um but when I first arrived I had a very basic sewing kit because I didn't really know how to sew so I didn't need all the different amazing colored threads that I know I have um, but there is also an amazing haberdashery in Bath, um, which has become my second home, Mr. Pickles Sewing Studio, um, where you also get a Norland discount. Um, and you don't even need to know the measurements of fabric. You go in and you say, I'm a third year doing my cape. And he just goes, Ch -ch -ch. he knows everything. He knows what you need. And he gives it to you in a bag with your discount. And um, that's where I started to go. I arrived with very little. And then that's when I started to go there and he basically told me what I needed to buy and I just nodded so yeah <laughs> brilliant I, I've got those other questions but I'm going to respond to people directly with some of those questions um that's all really what we've got time for Lucy could you forward it to the final slide for me so I can tell people about some up and coming events that was such a brilliant q and really 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 happy with that so obviously we'll try and answer as many as we can and there's obviously FAQs on our website as well so some of those uh, questions there may be answers on there and likewise you can obviously contact our admissions team um, but just to very quickly now just to bring you um, obviously what we've got coming up we have our we just had our May open day which was a record-breaking open day which is fantastic um, if you joined us then I'm sure you appreciate it was a really lovely day and you had a really good time the next one and on a physical open day which is going to be on campus is going to be on the 7th of October and bookings for that is open now so please do feel free to join us for that um, we'll have obviously a virtual open day for those who can't come to us uh, on campus that's going to be via zoom and that's on the 18th of november obviously bookings for those are live as well we have got more unwrapped sessions they're really good sessions and i hope you you find them really interesting as well and again they're all going to be online um, and they're virtual via zoom we're going to have our admissions q a um, which obviously involves everything you need to know about applying to Norland. Um, obviously, you're looking to apply for 2024. That's a really good session to join us on. Um, and specifically, you're, you're an international student as well. We'll have our international student manager, Claire, who's going to be joining us. And that's going to be in September. We're also going to have a really good session uh, with our finance team, all about fees and finance. Exactly, you know, what, what goes into our, what goes into the tuition fees, what support you can get. And obviously, Hattie mentioned earlier about our, our students, obviously, early while they're learning as well so just pencil that one in the diary that's going to be confirmed but that's the date we're hoping to do that and we're going to have another student life session the last one we had in February is available on our website and online as well and it's a really lovely session um, and you can ask students all about what it really is like to be a, a Norman student there's lots lots of information on our website the best way to find out the most information and, and find out the most up-to-date um, things that are going on at Norland is to join our mailing list. It's a really fantastic way for you to find out a little bit more about us and um, obviously get sneaky peeks of videos and things like that. So I'm going to end it there. I want to say a huge thank you to Hattie, to Lucy and to Becky. It's been a fantastic session. I hope everybody out there is really excited about the new degree in the diploma. We certainly are, um, obviously subject to validation, um, but it's going to be a really fun, fantastic. And obviously we will see you again at the next Norland Unwrapped. Likewise, if you've got any questions or queries, you can email the inquiries email address. You can email admissions or you can email myself. It's kate.morgan at norland.ac.uk. So I want to say a huge thank you for taking your time to, to take part this evening. The panellists, thank you so much. And we will see you again at the next Norland Unwrapped. Take care. Have a fabulous summer and we will see you again in September. Thanks very much. Bye bye.